I'm definitely not Mitch Connor. I just want to say, sorry, mom. So that's what Jihadi John says to his mom, apparently. Really. He has apologized to his parents for bringing shame to his family. But he's not uh, expressed any remorse for the barbaric killings of hostages. Blah, 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 blah. Apparently I missed something, because uh, that's from today. But this is from March 3rd. His father accuses Mohammed Amwazi of being a dog and a terrorist. The father of uh, Amwazi described his son as a dog animal and a terrorist. And revealed he begged his parents for forgiveness before joining ISIL and becoming Jihadi John. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Instead of forgiving him, Jassim Mwazi told his son that he had hoped he would be killed. Uh, or he would ho hoped he hoped he would be killed after he said he was going to Syria for jihad in 2013. So this was well before. And who's to say this is actually real? Is there any evidence of this? Nonetheless, um, let's go down a little in the article. Let's just show you something. Mr. Amwazi earns about 658 pounds per month, a sum which is said to barely cover his rent. Let's go back to the first article. Bullshit, 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 bull... Where'd it go? Oh, for some reason it... There we go. They were advised to leave their 600,000 pound council house for their own safety. Yeah. So what was that again? Uh, 658 pounds per month? That is jack shit. Now what is a council house? A council house, otherwise known as local authority house, normally part of a council estate, is a form of public or social housing. It's primarily used in the United Kingdom and Ireland. Council houses were built and operated by local councils to supply uncrowded, well-built homes and on secure tenancies at reasonable rents to primarily working class people. Council house development began in the late 19th century and peaked in the mid-20th century, at which time council housing included many uh, large suburban council estates and uh, numerous urban developments featuring tower blocks. Many of these developments did not live up to the hopes of their supporters and now suffer from urban blight. In other words, they're fucking run down. They're shitty. But apparently... $600,000. Now, maybe, just maybe, that's the uh, value of the whole freaking thing and not just the flat that he lives in. Nonetheless, remember, this is all hearsay. Um, once again, he uh, said this to him in 2013 that he was a dog and blah, 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 allegedly. Mr. Amwazi's views on his son were made plain in an emotional phone call he made to a colleague to explain his absence from his job as a storekeeper in a cooperative supermarket depot in an isolated rural area. Okay. Hey, remember this from the Washington Post? Mohammed Amwazi, a Briton from a well-to-do family. Um, what did that just say? He's a storekeeper in a cooperative supermarket depot who m makes less than 700 pounds a month. That's very well to do, isn't it? They just can't get their story straight. So, he was very emotional and crying the whole time, uh, said Mr. Michelle. He said, my son is a dog, he's an animal, a terrorist. He said he had talked to him a lot, trying to persuade him to return to his personal life, but that the son didn't listen to him. He said, to hell with my son. Well. And, um, well. Now, um, if he had emphatically rejected his eldest son during a phone call in 2013 from Turkey, when he asked for his parents' blessing for a trip to Syria to fight as a jihadist, wouldn't he at least recognize his son's voice and eyes? And I've already been over how that's not the same freaking voice. And we're about to go over a little bit more funny in that respect. In 2013, allegedly, uh, Jassim said, Fuck you, I hope you die before you arrive in Syria, which is... Pretty shitty thing for a father to say, but it's probably bullshit anyways. If it's truly an Abrahamic religion, it would preach forgiveness. Forgiveness. Mr. Amwazi can't come back to work because he felt so shy of other people. And he's sitting home and cannot even go to the mosque to pray because he's ashamed of his son. He doesn't want people to see him, so he's praying at home. What a baby. As if it's real. And, uh... 
Mr. Michelle's account echoed comments made by another unnamed colleague to Kuwait's Qabas newspaper, in which Mr. Hamwazi was reported to have expressed concern about his son long before his identity as a killer became internationally known. Yeah. Like I said, he would have known that was him. And there's a difference between the eyes, I'm sorry. Big, big difference. Not the same person. Also, they're not holding him responsible for his son de son's deeds, and he's free to return to work. Um, yeah, he hasn't reported for work since last Friday. <sighs> Ridiculous. And a reminder, I already covered uh, the whole Kuwait thing and the contradiction there and how, uh, you know, oh, he's in London, oh, he's in Kuwait. What the fuck? Oh, here's some fun. Is this Jihadi John in his first fanatical rant caught on camera? Hey, you see the white guys? White guy. Hey, another white guy. It stopped for me before our Daily Mail's videos are pieces of crap. Nonetheless, it doesn't look like his eyes to me either. Uh, white guy, yeah. Why do you think there's white guys there? Could it be because this is a whole Western setup? So, I mean, if they hated uh, the white guys so much and they like ca kidnapping journalists so much, um, why didn't they kidnap, like, this guy? And the other guy that's over here on the left that are recording this, not to mention the guy who's in the middle, whose camera view we see. So now let's come back to today and how Amazi. It was this, yeah today. Amazi's family have been forced into hiding since his identity was revealed. Yeah. Meanwhile, his father and eldest sister are in Kuwait. Because his mother is living in a secret location under police protection, along with four out of his five brothers and sisters. Sunday Times reports that Amwazi had sent an apology via a third party for the problems and trouble the revelations of his identity had caused. Now, let's let's troubleshoot a few scenarios. Um, I, he could be uh, recruited as an intelligence agent and doing something completely different. He could have been just plain taken out so that they could pin this on him. Who knows who the fuck the third party is, okay? You don't know. In the Islamic faith, it's believed that those who disobey or disrespect their parents are more likely to go to hell. Kuwaiti MPs have told Amwazi's father, Jassim, to publicly, not a different spelling, to publicly distance himself from his son's actions by apologizing or leave the country. Kuwaitis have become increasingly frustrated with the mixed messages coming from 51-year-old uh, Mr. Amwazi, whose family is said to have cost the British taxpayer up to $400,000. In the 20 years they have lived in the UK. Let's listen to this. Mwazi's father was instructing lawyers. We weren't allowed to interview Jazen in Mwazi, but he had the look of a man whose son is one of the world's most wanted men. Oh, did he, huh? Yeah. Let's look at that look. Oh, you piece of crap. Daily Mail's videos just suck for me. I don't know why. So let's look at... Uh, this man who definitely looks like his son is one of the most wanted men. Let's look at that again, under that premise. Okay. His father was instructing lawyers. No, no question, no question. We weren't allowed to interview Jazen in Mwazi, but he had the look of a man whose son is one of the world's most wanted men. You know, Bullshit. Yeah, and upset. Those lawyers say they are most concerned with connections that have been made in the media between their client and the knife-wielding man in the beheading videos, whose identity, they say, is far from certain. Ah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I've been saying the whole time. 
Oh, he looks so worried there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ending the article, last week, Mr. Amazi told former workmates of Sonos that oh, we went over that. Um, yeah, there's no proof that the mass executioner-in-chief was, in fact, Muhammad, says Mr. Amazi's lawyers. Why well, he has lawyers now, I don't know, because they told him he could return to work and all he had to do was freaking apologize or leave the country. Apologizing isn't too hard now, is it? Oh, and now we got another contradiction. Oh, now his uh, wife and four other children are in, are in London. Um... I thought they were originally all in London, then all in Kuwait, and now... Oh, they're all split up now. Because this is full of shit. And yes, it does say that Westminster Council is still paying the rent on the family's $600,000 flat. Or, sorry, sorry pound. 600,000 pound flat. Even though the rules say housing benefits should normally be stopped after 13 weeks. But that's a lot of money for a flat that's basically the same as HUD housing here. Okay, housing and urban development in America where they're pretty much just shitty fucking places to live for poor-ass people who are on fucking welfare. Um, as members of the stateless Badoon ethnic group, the Amazis were granted asylum in the UK, claiming to have fled Kuwait in fear of persecution. So why is this fucker back in Kuwait? Uh, who knows if that's even Amazi's father, we can't say. We know enough of this is a hoax. It, it, it almost... We almost might as well assume it's all a hoax. Until proven otherwise, anyway. Because this guy could be anybody. Anyway. Have a good one.